Hey, Tam. So, hey, Tam. Uh, <laughs> yeah, guys. So, Tam is going to upload this to her YouTube. I'm going to upload this to my YouTube. I'm so excited. Um, I how did I even meet you, Tamara? I don't even know. Um, Tamara commented on one of my YouTube videos, and I was like, Oh, she does, you know, she's like, I'm going to use uh, the bags on my chip bags too, whatever, you yeah. know, and, and in case y'all know, I'm Alicia, Crafts of a Different Shade, and that's Tam Sweet Life. Um, say hey, Tam, she on there. Hey, hey. That's it. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I didn't know who this person was, guys, and so I, like, clicked the link or something, you know, we started, I just was like, yeah, do it, and I found out Tam had a channel, so subscribe and I watch Tam's video. She does amazing party favors with Cricut. Um, you guys know probably like most of my party favors are printed outside of Cricut, but I think that using your Cricut, using a silhouette, whatever you have on hand is awesome because you need to use the resources that you have and there's always a you know a workaround. There's always a ram in a bush. That's one of the things I say. And Tam will tell you too. More than one way to skin a cat, right Tam? Like, yeah, so you know, the way I do it, the way Tamara does it may be a little different, but today we wanted to come together because Tamara wants to learn Photoshop. So, um, as most of y'all know, I create pretty much all of my party favors in Photoshop. I do the tutorials on Publisher because I noticed in my group there was a large demand of people who were um, requesting how to do it in Publisher and they were also using Publisher to do their party favors. So, um, but today, Tam is ready to, like, expand, and I don't even know why she needs me, y'all. Like, Tam, I really do. <laughs> don't say that, because I do. Like, yeah, I need your help with Photoshop. So she opens Photoshop, y'all, and I'm like, okay, let me take control real quick of her, her screen, and she's like, um, you know, this is what I've got. And I'm like, girl, you already did everything. Tam is over here designing uh, Pop-Tart you know, templates from scratch and ticket invitations from scratch with all kinds of effects on them and everything. So I said to her, I don't know why you need me, but um, she said she does need my help and we're going to learn together and do a tutorial today. And again, like I said, I just met Tam through YouTube. It expanded from there to Facebook. She's in my group. I'm in her group. And, you know, guys, we are all about supporting one another. So um, Tam, anything? No, I'm, you're the expert. I literally, it takes me, I can hook up, a, um, you know, a Cricut template in a few minutes. Photoshop is like a few hours, if not a few days. It so, does take you know, time, y'all. I, need... yeah. I think because like Photoshop has so many more things you can do. It. It's a very robust program, right? But then it's like, um, for Tam, you know, in Cricut, I, I was telling her, I want to make like 15 minute, you know, YouTube videos, but it's a little more difficult when you use Photoshop. He's like, oh, then I can add this. I can do this. I can take this background out, you know, so a lot of different stuff we can do. But we're just going to start with something simple today because Tam has already basically created this whole um, ticket invitation and it looks amazing. Her, you said these are your cousins? My, my godson. Oh. The godsons look bomb. We've got MJ back there. So let me do a, um, let me see if I can expand this out a little bit on my side. Okay, there's Tam also. So we kind of were talking a little bit earlier and I'm going to take control a bit of Tamara's screen. But one thing when I do these Photoshop tutorials, I do like you guys to drive because it really helps you get familiar with how to use Photoshop. And this is the way that I use it. So if you do anything different, don't hesitate to comment. Let Tam and I know if you have any input. You know, if you're like, oh, wow, never seen that before. You know, we love to hear from you guys. Um, so this looks amazing. We're just going to zoom in a little bit. She's got to that 25%, which is common when you have something like 300 DPI or PPI because it zooms out. So she's got her cousin. She got MJ. And she's like, can I do anything with this? I'm like, girl, this is bomb. You know, so. Tamara and I, we measure our templates, you know, we figure it out. But um, there was a few things that I noticed for Tamara. One thing that I was saying in the beginning was that she should use her properties panel. She already had her color panel, her libraries, and her layers down here. I love these three windows. If you're ever unsure how to get your windows to be set up like this, you just want to go window. I like to have my workspace at Essentials. That's really what it's going to default to. And any additional windows you want to see, they're in this tab. 
So I opened up her properties panel because I wasn't able to see that. And properties lets me know how big things are. So I can kind of keep things proportionate without always having to worry about dragging it out and seeing like, oh, it's like 3.307, you know? So for Tam, as she creates her templates in Photoshop or she does her design, she may need specific areas to be specific widths and heights. So this is a good thing for her. Um, properties panel always defaults to pixels. What you want to do is you want to right click to inches. And Tam, you know, slow me down if you have any questions. And what I did to show Tam how to really use this properties panel, because guys, we've been talking for like 30 minutes already before we started doing our video. Um, I came over to my shape tool. This is your tool presets. If you don't see them, go to your window, do tools, and they'll pop up. These are usually defaulted. I just grabbed a rectangle. I drew it out. The same as you would do in a Cricut or um, a publisher. Go ahead, draw it out. Now, you'll notice that it's not proportion because it's a rectangle, right? So do inches. I like to change it to inches. I don't know pixels. If you guys know a conversion of pixels, drop it below because I can't figure it out. Um, and I make them like even. This is your lock. So just like in Cricut, when you have the lock to keep the proportions, you can lock and unlock it. I'm going to go back and grab my move tool. And I'm actually just going to say, say for this, we need a five by five square. I'm just going to go ahead and type in five. Um, Tim, I might need you to type for me. Sometimes it doesn't okay. detect my, um, just go ahead and um, do five inches. You can right click and change it to inches. Okay. Yep. Oops. Because it was on centimeters, oh. guys. So watch that because make sure you have inches um, okay. selected. Yeah, because it will. Five pixels is so different from five inches. <laughs> right. Okay. So five inches by. Yeah. Let's just do a five by five square. Okay. Awesome. So now you have a, like a square instead of a rectangle. And if, this is your shape panel. So you have your fill here. Um, Tam, if you would go over where it's pink. Right here. Yep, that's your fill. So once your fill is going to, um, this actually, we change the color, but usually whenever you create something new, it defaults to your foreground color, which is over in your left-hand side of your tools. And um, I'll, I'll take control one more time. Okay. Yep. Um, so you have your foreground and background color right here. And this, if you ever want to change your shape, the reason why I like to keep items as shapes, and you'll see them if you insert a shape, you'll see it here that it has the four squares around it or the paths. Select your rectangle tool, and either in properties, you can change your color. Or you can come up here when your toolbar changes and make it whatever colors you may like. I'm going to do a eyedropper tool. So I'm just going to click on this, my color picker, and I'm going to go ahead and make it red like she already has. There we go. So that's how you would get it to be a red square. Your opacity, opacity is down. That's why it's oh. down like that. I was wondering. So, that. Yeah. yeah, so you guys notice that's good that the like Photoshop is doing this to us so we can figure out like why, right? Because when you're using Photoshop, you're like, why is this happening? And you guys haven't seen me on screen before. I'm very animated. Okay. So if you're not in my Facebook group, be prepared for it for some sports <laughs> show. Um you're like, why is it doing that? Always check your layers, see what it is. You might have a different blend mode on here as far as the lighting is concerned. Your opacity may be incorrect. So we're gonna go ahead, your fill may be low. I'm gonna go ahead and make this at 100%, it's not opaque. There's my red, okay? Um, so yeah, before it was white or pink or something, but it was opaque. So. This is cool. If you want to do any type of pattern, pattern, I always say that word weird. Um, you can choose these. These are defaulted patterns that Photoshop comes with. Um, Tam and I could do another tutorial, show you guys how to do patterns. I'm actually going to do a video on that later. 
So, Tam, what we can do is do a video, maybe even like how to use them effectively in your designs. Okay. And, um, excuse me, strokes, you know, stroke is your outline. <clears throat> excuse me. And you have a solid stroke, you have patterns, you have gradients, you can have no stroke. I'm going to put no stroke on this. Photoshop default shapes to having a stroke. Don't like that. I don't like it at all. Make sure you turn it off because, Tim, especially as you maybe do templates or you um, design something for somebody, mm -hmm. ensure that your shapes don't have strokes because they'll come in looking like um, dashes and you'll print it and you'll be like, why are these dashes on my document? You know, because you had a shape and it had a stroke that you weren't aware of and it's like so tiny. So unless you really zoom in at 100%, you won't see it. Um, so there's that. And I'm just gonna kind of like let that go. I'm gonna undo this. So as I was telling Tamara, anytime you want to affect something, make sure you have that tool selected. Um, if you wanna change your shape, you need to have your shape tool selected, okay? Um, I keep doing Control Z. If you wanna do multiple, um, multiple undos, You'll do Control Alt Z on the Windows, and it's um, what is your Control key? Windows. Okay. Uh, yeah, what is it called though? It's um the Mac key or I forget. Um, I, I, don't know. I just got this thing. Okay, I'm I, still I, learning everything. I haven't been on my Mac in a while, guys. But your Mac has different controls. It's um, it's. It's whatever these keys are. I forget what they're called, guys. That's just sad. Like, you don't use a Mac for, like, a month and you forget. Um, these are that your... That little... Yeah, those little symbols are how you do uh, multiple undos on your Mac. Um, I'll have to Google and remember what those are called. So we're just going to step backwards multiple times. And um, there we go. We're back to red. So that's pretty much how you will create a shape. I was telling Tamara, one of... One of the things I noticed when she did her template, this is still a rectangle layer by name. However, it's not a shape. And you can tell it's a shape because of the paths. So what happens is if you want to make changes to your shape, like say instead I was like, ooh, love this red color, but I want to make it pink. And what you might want to do to make it pink is use a paint bucket tool without actually going up here, doing what I just did, you try to take like a little simpler way, like quicker way, right? So you grab your paint bucket tool and you're like, paint bucket tool, the color is gonna default to your foreground. You'll see it up here, foreground color. And you go to click this, uh-oh, wrong layer. You go to click this layer and you'll see this come up. Do you wanna rasterize the shape? So you can hit, anytime this comes up, if you hit OK, as I was telling Tamara, it's basically like you flattened or you welded your layer in Cricut. All right, guys? So make sure that you don't do that. I like to keep the same properties for whatever I'm using. If you have text and you rasterize it, you'll, you just welded your text, like in Cricut. You won't be able to see the, um, the font name. You won't be able to see, like, the effects of the font, maybe you put a stroke on it or you um, bolded it, you won't be able to see that detail anymore. So I prefer not to rasterize things unless maybe it's like a picture or some clip art, okay? Um, so here's our guys. They look great. One of the things like I was also telling Tamara is her admit one here. Um, the color is a little off to me and I was saying go and change the color. And Tamara grabbed her text tool, which would make sense, right? Because it's text. It appears as though it's written. But what Tamara did was she typed out admit one. And somewhere along the way, probably just clicking along or having fun, whatever, you know, she learns Photoshop. Um, she went to change the color or do some adjustments to these words, and the text became rasterized. So Tamara, you'll see that it's white right mm -hmm. why is the text white because the foreground color bingo yep so <laughs> if you ever want to change the foreground color like we're like i really need this pink that's my background color go ahead and hit that arrow ah. your photoshop default colors are black and white you can click them see that okay. or you can go ahead and pull this up your color picker 
So I say to Tamara, I say, I really like the red you have. Let's keep it consistent, you know? Um, but you guys notice this, then I changed the color, but the words didn't change. Nothing on my layer here changed. Why? Because I did not highlight it. You need to select it. You can change your color here and properties. It's so many ways, guys, you can do this stuff. You can change it up here. You can just do so many different things. So many things, it's the same thing, three different ways in Photoshop. And there we go. So her text is defaulted to funny and cute. She doesn't want that text. Let's go over here and pull up our character panel. This little window, this little folder, or you go window, character. All right, I like to use my character panel when I'm doing text. And what font would you like, Tamara? Ticket, I don't know what font you used. I think it was um, Arial Black. Okay. Um, sometimes when we're sharing screens, Zoom doesn't like it too much when I try to type. I don't know, it just gets weird. So we'll do admit one, but we want to do it as um, Arial Black. So here in our character panel, we could type it. Arial Black Regular. See that? Okay. Instead of, sometimes what I like to do, that you may need to scroll through your font. You know, you're like, I just don't know which one I want. And the best thing about this, unlike with your Cricut, look at that. It can see it automatically. So I'm going to go back to her Arial Black. Because, you know, you might remember your font. Like, I, knew, I know that's Mohanda font. I know that's Disney font. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, man, these letters are too far apart. Just like you do your kerning, you know, Tam, and your Cricut, right? You adjust mm -hmm. it. So you're like, let's do, let's make our closer together. Have you done this? No. Okay, cool. So your character panel and paragraph is your best friend for kerning. Um, okay. You can also do it up top if you have the text tool selected. But I just like to come down here, and I like to use my character panel a lot. Okay. So I'm just going to go, kind of, you don't really have to highlight it, but I will for video sake. And look at that. Cricut already, I mean, excuse me, Photoshop gives you, you know, 25% um, inter, integers, integers, excuse me, of how to um, decrease or increase your spacing. So you might want a lot of space. You might want less. It's very awesome. You might not want it in 25. You might want 17. You know, so you can manipulate it to be how you want. It was at zero because face, um, I keep saying Facebook cricket. Photoshop <laughs> knows how the font is set up. So let's make it a little tighter. I like my fonts to be a little tight, guys, just so that it looks like you would write it. Um, you know, it's, I don't know. Tim, what you think? That's good. That looks good. Yeah, so we'll go with like 25, right? Um, and there's also a really cool font called Ticketing that you guys might want to use too when you do your tickets. Um, the good thing about Photoshop, unlike Cricut, when you download a font, it's automatically in there. Yeah, yeah I noticed that. that. That's yeah. amazing. I love where, that. Where is that font available? Um, I get a lot of my fonts from thefont.com, font space. Okay. Um, guys, if you ever want any tips and tricks for doing fonts, this is my tip to you. You all know if you watch my videos, I'm kind of like, I don't really like to buy stuff all the time, um, you know, but if I need to, I will. However, one great hack to finding something on the internet is to say Mohana font free. Search mm -hmm. it on Google, add that word free. And you'll find what you need. Um, if you're finding like there's a really, maybe you have like a really popular font and um, you can't get it, you know, you are, this is your first party favorite. You don't have a budget. And I'm sorry, you know, all my designers, I do pay for them, you know, but as like a small business, I know the struggle guys sometimes. So you might just want to put in like Disney font free. People have created the Walt Disney font for you as available for free. Um, you guys can get into your own personal commercial uses, you know, on your own. That's what you deal with internally. Um, so downloading fonts from thefont.com, simple download. You'll probably get a zip file, Tam. You know this. Mm -hmm. Double click, install, got fonts. Um, I love, I love fonts. You know, I love fonts. I'm a font whore. I buy fonts. I download them for free, whatever, guys. Um, if you can sign up, like, um, what's those places? Like, Hunger JPEG, mm -hmm. um, Creative Market, those font bundles, free fonts, you know, or fonts for, like, so cheap. Sign up for their emails, guys. Give yourself some um, diversity in your fonts. So, that's it. I mean, 
from here, I would probably just, you know, I was telling Tim the reason I would keep this as a text is in case I wanted to change the color or maybe I want to make it like higher or um, let me show you guys something. If this was on two lines, now when Tam has this as a template, her godson's like everybody probably like, yo man, that's hot. That's how they talk. I don't know how people talk. Anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> yo, man, that's hot. I'm gonna need that for my party though. I'm about to be 16. You know what I'm saying? You be like, okay, that contact my, you know, my godmom Tam, and Tam comes back in here. If she uh, didn't have this text layer, she's gonna be like, ah, I gotta recreate this whole thing. I don't know what fonts I use. I don't know what colors I use. You know, so it's just way more simple to do that. But in the event, say you were like, let's get a little creative with this, right? And I want to um, have each one of these a different color, like the letters. Okay. What you would do, what I would do is I would duplicate this. So all I did was right click and Tam was asking me like, how do I just copy the layer, right? So Tam, what were your options? Like, um, on this layers, well, initially I had no idea. So you said go to this layers tool right here, right? Yep. And then do a, a right click on it. Yes, ma'am. And then duplicate, or you could do uh, on my Mac, I could do command, command C, right? Command, that's your control. Yep, command. Yep, that was the key I was looking for. Yep, command C, command V can copy. Yep. Right. And also up top layer, and my hair is looking, oh, yeah, sorry, um, layer. Okay. And um, the top right here. Yeah, uh -huh, layer, okay. duplicate layer. Make sure if you want to affect the layer, you have the layer selected in your layers panel. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, if, if I were Tamara, that's what I would do. You know, if I'm like, I really want to do some, maybe like a double stroke or I want to change each of these letters, I would duplicate it. So I can come back to this template and have, you know, the plain one and without it being flattened or, you know, just rasterized. And I would come here and I would take, you know, the layer that's showing. And let's say I want to, hmm, I could do it right ways. I'm going to grab my paint bucket tool. Let's make it black because it's going to default to your foreground. And you see, when I click the layer, rasterize it. Ask me, do you want to do this? Photoshop is like, are you sure you want to do this? I do want to do this, Photoshop. It's like, good, because that's permanent. <laughs> and then I can change it. You know, so these are the kind of things that are really cool. Let me undo that. That you can do, right? So where was that right here? I'm which one? That, no, that was that was right here. Yep, yeah, your paint bucket tool. So Tamara didn't have her paint bucket tool showing, guys. It's not always a default tool. Want to click these three bars right here, three dots, edit toolbar, and you can come and you can add in tools or delete tools from your toolbar that you need. So like a lot of things when I'm creating party favors, y'all, I don't need my paths tool because I'm not going to, I'm not always if i need to do something with paths i go to illustrator i'm not going to be in here you know fixing up um shapes and doing all kind of doohickeys you know yes i want to turn to a live shape like i'm not going to be in here doing that can i absolutely but i don't really need to you know if you do just go grab the tool you need from the extras but a lot of these things i don't really use like i'm not going to be um you know, using my pen tool and make it. You know, okay. I didn't even know they had that. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's very similar. Um, a lot of the stuff you can do is like um, you can do these like paths and stuff like you do in Illustrator, but Illustrator is just basically made for vectors. You know, Photoshop mm -hmm. can can do some of them, but. Mm. So I think, you know, like when you get into doing more um, like pictures, Tan, when you want to take like a background or do like photo photography editing, a lot of these tools are awesome to use or you want to blur something, clone, you know, a little part of your picture. Maybe, you know, you and your family go take some pictures and you're like, oh, 
um, I had a bad breakout that day or, you know, I need to mm-hmm. fix, you know, I got my little spot here. So that's the kind of stuff Photoshop can do and a lot of these tools do. But for party favors, we're not always going to use them. You know, yeah. like yeah. I, if you send me a picture of your little child and he got a little scar right here, I'm going to put that little scar on that baby. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's how he looks. Yeah, yeah, that little baby going to have his scar on his chin back.